Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new edition of the Iron Phantom's Black Book. With me, the Iron Phantom. So it is a fresh new episode, and of course, this is no holiday special like the last episode, no. We are going to have two short stories of horror. So let us begin with the first one. This first story is called The Ty is called Time of Dimmer. Please don't be misled by its title. It is something completely different to what you probably think when you hear the name of the title. Enjoy. Milo never had an easy life. He was constantly abused by his father and bullied at school. Being vulnerable as he was. Every day he would go to school and the local popular kids, the jerks, would all torment him verbally and physically. The only girl that seemed to show him any compassion was a strange outcast girl named Krista. She showed him compassion. One night, in the light of a full moon, some of the people that bullied Milo, came across Krista. She looked to be in a hurry as she said she had to be somewhere. Angering her, she punched one of them and knocked the other one to the ground. The ringleader said, Oh, is it your time of the month? Okay, I'll let you go. Then, they say, Hey, what do you think Milo is doing? They see Milo leaving the library late. Then he comes across the gang. They go up to him and torment him, bullying him, and then knocking him to the ground and ripping up the book he borrowed from the library. Walking home, he then hears a noise coming from in the woods as the small town he lived in was just outside some woodlands. He heard a noise, thinking could it be a dog, and then he encounters a werewolf, a fierce creature. It then approaches him he starts to run from the creature, but as he begins to run, the creature scratches him, and then Milo flashes his phone at the creature, using the light on his phone. The wolf then runs way away, back into the woods. Milo is then left with a huge scratch. As he goes home, he sees his drunk father laid on the sit on the sofa, passed out. He then goes upstairs and washes the wound, but then notices that the scratches are starting to heal. The next morning he sees that the scratches are now healed into scars and wonders what the hell is going on. One month later, Milo begins to have these feelings, increased senses, craving of meat. 
hands, feeling stronger and more alive. Upon walking home, he starts to feel unwell, as he feels something trying to break its way out of him. He then decides to leave the library early till the gang of youths that bully him take Milo and drag him back into the library and lock him in the janitor's cupboard. He then says, please, let me go. I don't feel so good. The ringleader saying, oh yeah, you're not feeling good now. You're going to feel even worse. Then, as one of them strikes a punch at him, he holds his hand back, stopping him. Then, crushing his hand with all his strength, he then starts to rip out of his clothes and transform into the very beast that attacked him a month before. Once fully transformed, he rips the gang to shreds, killing them. The next morning, he awakens, naked and covered in blood with scratches all over the walls. He then manages to get out of the janitor's cupboard and he then flees home in the early hours of the morning. He manages to get inside, have a shower, and get some clothes on. Then, hearing on the local news, some people were found murdered and mauled to death by some believed to be a wild animal. Then, he then goes to school and sees Krista looking at him. She then says, as she approaches him in the school library, I know what you are. He then says, no you don't. She then says to him, yes I do. You're a werewolf. Milo then says, this is impossible. Werewolves do not exist. Oh, come on. How do you explain last night? I felt it. You transformed as I did. What do you mean? I am the wolf that attacked you a month ago. You scared me off. Smart move. I could have killed you. But now you are like me, a lichen, and you don't need to fear it, embrace it. You transform three nights every month, and tomorrow will be your second time. The first few transformations are the painfulest, but you'll get through it. I'll help you. You've, I've always wanted a friend someone like me and now I do. I'm sorry I did that to you. I hope you can understand that it was my wolf self that was in control. Anyway, you freed yourself from those bullies. I hear that your father beats you. What happened to your mother? Krista asks. Milo says my mother died when I was a baby. My father has raised me and abused me. Constantly blames me for her death because she died giving birth to me. Your father sounds like a vile man. He is. I hate him. Good, said Krista. Then use that tonight when you transform for the second time. Then... Later that day, as the night comes in, Milo returns home. His drunk father then says, Where the fuck have you been? Come here, you. 
Milo then smiles, knowing that the full moon will rise not long after. The next morning, Milo wakes up and sees that he has killed his father. He then has a wash and puts on some fresh clothes. With it being a Saturday, he ventures out into the woods and waits there all day till night comes. He then sees Krista. Milo says, how did you know I was here? Krista says, I turned you, remember? I feel everything that you feel. And tonight is the third time we transform. Is it always three nights a month? Yes, it is. And tonight, we are at our fullest and our strongest. It's that time of the month. They then strip and both walk on deeper into the woods, naked as they prepare for the third and final transformation of the month. Then, as the moon is full in the sky, Milo goes up to a cliff top and howls at the full moon, now at his full power of being a werewolf. Did you enjoy that story? Did you like what I meant when I said time of the month? Yes, it is like anthropy. Okay, so let's get to the next story and the final story of this episode. This next tale that I'm going to tell you is called Johnny No Teeth. Jonathan Denton had a loving family and they all moved to a new neighborhood. Of course, when he started his new school, he was picked on and bullied. He tolerated it and tried to take no notice, but then the bullying turned physical. One point, Jolly Jonathan played a prank on his bullies letting off a stink bomb. The gang, not taking friendly to it, decided to make a gas that would smell bad for him. The ringleader took two of his friends and said, we are going to play a joke and go to teach John Denton a lesson he'll never forget. They then start to mix some chemicals together to try and create some odor. Letting off a horrible smell, the two say, man, this reeks. I know, we are so gonna get him with this. Don't breathe it in though. Why? Because if you breathe it in, you're eating it. You're eating the odor. Just shut up and let's put it in this glass bottle. One day when Johnny is happily walking down the street, one of the boys go, Hey, Denton! Then the ringleader throws the glass bottle at Johnny, letting out the horrible smell. The chemical was strong, then they fought, and when he breathed it in through his mouth, he choked. Not only that, but it affected his gums badly. And then his teeth began to fall out. He was then rushed into the hospital, and there the doctors said, 
without his teeth. We can't replace them. He's toothless. I'm sorry. Johnny's mother said, oh, Johnny, I'm so sorry. How could these bullies do this to you? The three boys admit to their cry, saying, We honestly didn't know it was going to be that strong. You realize the chemicals you mixed together formed an acid which made his teeth fall out. Do you know what happened to his teeth? I don't know. We're sorry. Well, this is your first offense. And for some reason, Johnny hasn't filed any charges against you. So you're free to go. Really? Yes. Clearly he sees the humor if it was a prank. A prank gone wrong. Johnny now sitting there toothless. Thinking about all the food he won't be able to eat without his teeth. He eats soup. And then he goes out looking for his teeth. Constantly, constantly looking around the site where the accident occurred, but unaware that the chemicals melted away his teeth and dissolved them. Looking around again and again, it drove Johnny insane. Eventually, he went insane. He then went to the store, a joke shop, and purchased a clown mask. Then, that night, he went down to the garage and put on a boiler suit, and then placed a leather glove on his right hand and took some pliers. He got the mask and cut it in half and then put the bottom half over his mouth. Meanwhile, one of the bullies who was out late at night, messing around, then said, I better get home now. My parents might wake up and wonder where the hell I am. I'll see you guys tomorrow. He then walks along and cuts through the park. That is when Johnny comes out and knocks him to the ground. The ringleader's like, what the hell? Then, through the mask, Johnny, saying toothless, without his tooth saying, Where's my teeth? The ringleader say, I don't know. I thought you didn't pull, file any charges against us. Where's my teeth? Johnny then gets out a knife and stabs the ringleader in the leg. Screaming in pain, he begs for mercy, but Johnny does not give it to him. Stabbing him constantly, he then takes the knife and puts it away, and then gets out the pliers and begins to pull all the teeth out of his mouth. Looking around, all of his teeth he then takes one of them and keeps them as for the others he drops onto the body the next day a jogger passing by finds the body and it makes headline news johnny's mother sees this on the television and johnny walks in she says oh jonathan you shouldn't be watching this Johnny then saying, Is this one of the gang that did this to me? Yes. They say he was stabbed to death and his teeth were removed. Oh no, said Johnny. Where were you last night, she said. I think I heard you sneak out, said his sister. No, uh... Then, the next night, the two friends whose ringleader friend was killed says, 
I think I know who did this. It was the freak, the Johnny No Teeth guy. Johnny No Teeth? Yes. They then separate and part ways. Saying, I'll catch you later, man. You too. As the one walks alone, he then hears someone. He hears someone say, Where's my peace? Who's there? Look, go away, all right? Then, out of nowhere, Johnny jumps out and hits him with a branch. He then says, No, please, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, okay? It wasn't my idea, all right? The other guys, they put me up to it, honest. Then, Johnny saying, Johnny, no teeth. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to call you that. No, I like that name. I have no teeth. I just wear the mask. Now I kill you. No, no. Then Johnny beats him to death with the branch. After he gets out his pliers and starts to pull out all of his teeth. Then the same night Johnny goes to the house of the third boy. He goes to bed and starts to fall asleep till he hears a noise at the window. He goes to investigate and looks around and sees nothing. He then returns to bed. Then, that is when Johnny climbs up and gets in through his window. He then hears something in his room. He then turns on his light and looks around and sees nothing. Then he turns out the light. Then at the side of his bed, Johnny No Teeth appears and removes his pillow. He then wakes up and says, What the? And before he finishes his sentence, Johnny smothers him with the pillow and then again removes his teeth. The next day, it is reported on the local news, his mother more unsettled, saying, the gang that did Johnny's thing to him, it has made him, all the Vic bullies have been killed and had their teeth removed. His father saying, this isn't our son, he wouldn't do that. Johnny, are you okay? When they go up to his room and ask him, he says, Hi, mother. His mother then saying, You know, the dentist says that they could, on record with your dental records, they could recreate and redo your teeth for you, and then you'll have teeth again. How does that sound? I don't want teeth anymore. Why not, Johnny? You can eat solid food again. You don't have to eat liquidized stuff. Nah, I like the new me. Later that night, his mother asleep. He is a noise. She goes into the bathroom and sees Johnny wearing the boiler suit and the mask and the brown leather glove with pliers and sees him counting the teeth of the boys he killed. His mother horrified saying, Johnny, what did you do? These are my teeth now, but I only want 
one on each set. He then pulls, he then grabs a canine tooth and a wisdom tooth from the two he killed. His mother then says, look, I'm going to hug you now and please, everything's going to be fine, says Johnny's mom. She then hugs him and then I'm going to get your father, okay? She then goes to the bedroom and wakes up the father saying, listen, it's our son, he's gone insane. What? Then I stood at the bedroom door. Johnny says, What are you doing, ma'am? Nothing, Johnny. Look, son, what the hell? What do you got on? Is this my overalls? Look, let's put you to bed. Then Johnny pulls out the knife and stabs his father in the stomach. Then his mother, she runs, but then trips. And Johnny grabs her. And then he wraps some shoelace around her neck and strangles her to death. Then after he goes to his sister's bedroom where she is asleep and as she's asleep she hears the words where's my teeth she then wakes up and says johnny then before she can turn around he stabs her the next morning on the news, it is reported that the Denton family have been murdered and all their teeth removed. Believed to be the son who did it, Jonathan Denton, whose whereabouts is unknown, was at the crime scene. They see written blood on the walls. Where's my teeth? As Johnny No Teeth, his whereabouts is unknown, wanting to now be known by that name. And there you go, the two short stories for this month. Did you enjoy this month's episode of the Iron Phantom's Black Book? I trust you did. Did you like the stories? Share down in the comments below. And if you like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Share with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to the official Random Horror YouTube channel and to hit the notification bell. All of the social media links are down below. Well, that is it for this one. I have been your host, the Iron Phantom. So until next time, don't have nightmares. And I will be back with a Christmas special to finish off Volume 2 of this series.